be Dario Leon, who will speak about uh, frequency dependence in the GW approximation. So we stress the role of the frequency part in the screening. Thank you so very much please. for the introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Dario Leon. I am a postdoc at CNR Modena. And as David said, I, I will uh, speak about the frequency dependence in the GW approximation. This is the outline of, of my talk. First, I will introduce, uh, so starting from the GW equation, uh, we will get to the frequency representation. And the, the idea is to understand the computational complexity of the GW calculation. Then I, I, will, to, uh, I will introduce the, the most uh, commonly used uh, method for integrating the self-energy, starting from, from the plasmon pole approximation. I will explain briefly its origins, uh, the generalization, and the different uh, implementation, and the achievement uh, and limitation of this uh, model. Then I will also explain a common, uh, another full, uh, alternative full frequency approaches, like numerical integration on the real axis, the contour deformation technique, and uh, uh, we, we want to understand the computational cost compared to the previous approach. Uh, in the end, I will also introduce a new, a new methodology that is called the multiple approximation and that uh, has been uh, developed uh, in Jambo. I uh, will explain some of the main motivation, and we also want to compare its accuracy and computational cost with the previous methods. Then, starting from the GW side, uh, the, this is the hidden pentagon of the equation. Uh, as uh, already um, the previous speaker from yesterday explained very well, uh, in the GW approximation, Hi. we neglect the vector correction Hi. to get this uh, simplified uh, cycle. My English, my English the no? starting point is uh, uh, usually a, a simple approach like uh, DFT, so we start by, by Konechamp, uh, G0. Uh, so the self-energy is uh, uh, null, and then the first iteration, we need to uh, compute this, uh, the polarizability at the independent particle level, then the re reducible one, and then the self-energy, that is this product of the green function and uh, the screening potential W. Then how to arrive to the frequency space? We simply, I, I recall this picture of, uh, of the green function that represent transition uh, of uh, uh, electron or holes from a position, a given position at a given time to a, a different coordinates. Then, uh, so this, um, this notation is very compact here I, I am putting the, the coordinates. One or two represent these uh, coordinates uh, uh, both in space and time. Then uh, I will just use the, 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 the time variable to arrive to uh, them perform the frequency, uh, uh, sorry, the Fourier transform to arrive to the frequency space. Since we have a simple product of two uh, operators, this results in a, a convolution in the frequency space. Uh, both for the polarizability, that is a convolution between the two green functions evaluated at different frequency, and uh, the, the self-energy. So this is the problem, uh, the, the integral we want to, to solve for in, in the ideal approximation. Then, uh, as I already introduced Pedro yesterday, uh, we can try to a lemma representation. Uh, so here, this is an example I took from the book of uh, Stefanucci. Um, so for instance, we take the retarded green function. Uh, this is uh, of the theta function in time. Um, we have a Hamiltonian. Then we just simply transform, uh, Fourier transform this uh, green function. We use uh, this expression for the heavy side function. And then we arrive uh, to this equation here. Then if we introduce a complete set of uh, eigenstates for the Hamiltonian, we, we get the, the Lehmann representation. So we have poles in the excitation energies uh, of, the, of the system. Then uh, from, the, from the Lehmann representation of the green function, uh, we, we can compute that uh, starting from a uh, chan basis set. So here, again, the, the poles are in the, in the excitation energy. 
then we have also the project of, of the, the states. We can integrate the convolution I showed in the previous slide for the price ability, and we arrive to a lemma representation for uh, this uh, other operator, where uh, it's a very similar expression. Now we have poles instead of the uh, excitation energy, we have poles in the uh, transition energy. So this delta uh, E corresponds to different uh, state transition between state K, uh, I, and K, K minus, minus Q, J. Uh, so this is the uh, full expression of this polarizability. In all the values, we have used also the Fourier transform in the, of, the, um, of the spatial coordinates in, in, in a crystal, so we have also symmetry. This result in G, G prime, and also Q coordinates. And then this, this object enters in the Dyson equation that is no, a nonlinear equation, and uh, we obtain the re, uh, reducible polarizability. So uh, we, we want to understand what happened in this uh, Dyson equation. So we start by a representation that is, all, we have a lot of peaks, delta light peaks are uh, in the excitation energies. But then this, uh, somehow this picture is destroyed because what we want is a, a, a um, we want to describe collective expectation. We, we, we are switching on the interaction. So um, this picture is destroyed uh, for, for the reduced polarizability. What we, want, we, want, uh, what we can do is to compute this object uh, at each frequency at the time. Uh, we, want, uh, we can compute it numerically. So the, the computational cost of the, the evaluation of this polarizability uh, can be found in this paper, for instance. So we, we have, a, let's say, we have an integration over the brilliant zone. We have summation over conduction balance bands. And, and also uh, N, N, C, uh, C is the, the number of plane waves of, uh, of the basic set, basic set. Then there is also a crucial uh, point that is the method we use to integrate the self-energy, this, for instance, will determine the number of frequencies we need to use for evaluating the polarizability. And there is also a further sum over bands uh, in, the, in this integration. You can see the full expression uh, in the Yambo cheat sheet and also uh, in, the, in the next presentation by uh, Alberto Guandalini. So the, the origin of the plasma polar approximation uh, um, came from the study of the electronic correlation effect in simple metal uh, that, that can be modeled by a, a simple electron gas. Uh, for, for instance, uh, we can take aluminum as an example. Um, here, uh, we, we realize that the mod uh, relevant excitation for a uh, small Q uh, corresponds to a strong peak in the binary part of, of uh, the screen potential. Uh, uh, that have a, a, a very small width. Um, so the idea is to model this uh, excitation with uh, a simple delta light peak, as I, I'm showing here. So we, we have simply this pole. Uh, this is the marginal part. And uh, the fair application of this model uh, has been used for, for the description of the main longitudinal uh, plasma pole, uh, plasma mode observed in space. In, uh, yields experiment. Here I am showing a, a simple comparison uh, of the of this plasma uh, in Hartree for a, a set of material. We, we can see that uh, um, the, the is in very good agreement with the, the experimental value. Then this this model has been generalized to the full me, uh, metrics. So we we are extending the the model for also for G. G prime and, and Q coordinates. Um, so this is less, uh, this has been done by Harvesting and Louis. Um, this, um, this model is less accurate for large Q, uh, large G vectors. So we have, uh, we don't have any more, a uh, uh, single peak, we have many more peaks. But, uh, so this is less accurate, but in general, uh, W is dominated by the small value of Q plus G, because it's multiplied by uh, Coulomb potential. That is uh, 
has an inverse relationship with uh, this model square. So this is the model generalized for each Q, G, G prime. We compute this single uh, matrix element with this plasmon pole. Uh, here I am showing the analytic <coughs> continuation. So we have two parameters, the poles and the residue. And the, there are two main ways to residue to obtain the parameters. One, uh, so we need to impose some condition. One possible option is the, the F sum rule. I am showing here uh, uh, using the Johnson formalist. This is just a recipe for computing. Even if we don't know analytical expression of chi, uh, there is a recipe for computing this integral as a function of the electronic density. Uh, the other method is uh, an interpolation uh, of the parameters. For this, we just need two frequency points. Uh, so set, in this case, equal zero and set uh, equal i uh, omega p. So we are computing a frequency along the binary axis. And then with these two parameters, we can interpolate uh, the, um, the model. This, this recipe is by God and needs. In, in, in the end, uh, I prefer in the end. So uh, here I am showing uh, the comparison. So this is the polarizability computed for uh, three different materials. So the, the, the panels on top correspond to the polarizability computing al along the binary axis, where we, we, we get a smooth dependence, because all the poles of the polarizability lies on the real axis. Then if we sample uh, the polarizability along the uh, imaginary axis, what we see is something like this, no? very smooth. We, we see the main structure uh, correspond to all the pole uh, at the origin of coordinates. Then as we go far, uh, we, we, we lose the information. No? But then, so I, I'll tell you, uh, we can compute one frequency at a time, the reduced polarizability, then interpolate the model, uh, for instance, along the binary axis. But then, since we have an analytical model, we can evaluate the model on the real axis, where actually we want to compute the self-energy. And this is the comparison with the full frequency case. Uh, so here in this uh, Dyson equation, uh, what happens is all the poles uh, of the K node that are single particle are overlapped, and we get this overall structure so we have this for silicon, it's very, very uh, simple to see that we have a plasma uh, and it's not always uh, like this, no? We have more complex material, but in, in the end, we have our overall structure. Uh, so this is a, a, a table from a, this paper uh, I am taking for comparing different uh, plasma pole uh, results of the bank gap in this set of materials. So here, beside the high and Louis and Godinitz recipe, there, there are more refining uh, of the plasma pole model by, by von der Li uh, Linder Horch and Angel Farid. They use all the same Johnson ru some rule, but the, 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 uh, the refinement lies in, in the spatial coordinates. So we also have uh, understood uh, this uh, Johnson's rule that can be written as uh, in the form of this limit here. Then we can rewrite uh, Heibetz and Louis equation for the plasma pole in the similar way of the Godinit uh, version with an interpolation of two frequency, and the second one is uh, at infinite. So the, just to say that the, the sampling is a general procedure. So the, uh, as I showed before, the, the plasma pole provides quasi-particle with a, a energy, with a, a reasonable level of accuracy in many materials, but it has several limitations. The, the first one uh, is that we are, we are not able to describe the imaginary part of W. Uh, so this result in the um, representability issues in the self-energy, this is the self-energy uh, of aluminum. As a simple case, we can see that the, the self-energy has a very well-defined peak uh, full frequency, but here 
Um, the, so in the self-energy, we have a summation over the state that results in this, uh, all these peaks, the, the, the discretization of all these peaks uh, in the plasma pole case because W uh, doesn't have uh, the, the minor part uh, well described in, in the plasma pole model. So if we compute um, quasi-particle along the Fermi uh, energy, we will get very accurate result compared to full frequency. But as we go uh, far for, from fe the Fermi level, we, we will reach a region uh, very noisy and we will get uh, some problem in the plasma pole model. Um, so, and, and also, there are materials with uh, the self energy is more complex, that have more, uh, frequency, uh, more structure in frequency, and the plasma pole is expected to fail in these cases. So, regarding the integration of the self energy, uh, we, uh, we can see that we can use the plasma pole. So, we have an analytical model for W that is simple to integrate uh, the convolution in the self energy. But the, there are also alternatives uh, that I call full frequency. The first uh, simple example are if uh, we, we can integrate um, uh, sigma in the, in the convenient basis set. Uh, or to use a, a spectral representation. Uh, but the, these approaches are usually uh, accompanied by, by some uh, approximation. For instance, we can approximate the, the polarizability metrics as almost diagonal. Uh, so the integration is exact in this basic set, this, uh, but there may be some approximation. Um, so th this also may be um, system dependent because, uh, for instance, we use uh, a localized system. We can use localized basis set in order to get a, a, a few, uh, a, the less number of uh, um, be, uh, the, 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 uh, the basis set to be as small as possible uh, because the computational uh, cost explodes with the, with the size of the system. Uh, there are also numerical integration uh, method. For instance, by using quadrature rules, uh, for this we need to compute the integral numerically in, in a very fine frequency grid. This is the real um, axis scheme implemented in Jambo. Or we can use the full frequency contour deformation or the analytic continuation through with some models, for instance, uh, analytical model like uh, the Padre Proxima. Then, the, this uh, list is not meant to be a uh, comprehensive list. There are many more um, uh, methods. For instance, we can use the Fourier transfer to imaginary time or some stochastic approaches to compute the, the integral. Uh, but we, we also add the, our development, new development is uh, also an analytical model that, uh, that we call multiple approximation. Uh, so I will explain now the main uh, approaches implemented in Jambo, so the plasma pole, the, the full frequency on the real axis. I will also explain the, the contour deformation because it's a very used uh, technique and then the multiple approach. So if we substitute the green function in the self energy integration, we get this expression. We can simplify, uh, so we can reduce the, the limit of the integration if we use the, the, the symmetry property of W so that W is anti-symmetric. Uh, then the, this integral can be computed using quadrature rules. I am listing some of the possibilities here <coughs> that, that are compared in the, this paper uh, here. So the version implemented in Jambo is called piecewise linear. So what we do is to uh, approximate W uh, linearly in uh, each interval that we are uh, uh, we are computing in the very fine uh, frequency grid, so this this approximation um, is better as we we use a, a finite mesh. So the, since then we approximate W linearly in each interval, and since we have now analytical uh, expression of W we can integrate the, uh, the, self, um, the self energy and we get this expression over here that is the one implemented in Jambo. 
Then, in order to understand the computational cost of this approach, um, we need to analyze the pole structure of the UW operator. So, the green function has four poles on the excitation energy uh, a charm if you use a G naught, W naught. While W, uh, so K naught have poles uh, in the transition energy, then, then this poles enters in the polarizability, but the lemma representation is, is general. So the polarizability also ha has a, a lemma representation, just that we don't know where are the poles. But W also have this pole structure uh, in the complex frequency plane. Then, um, so in order to, to represent these objects, uh, we need to use, because we cannot put a, uh, an infinitesimal imaginary part in a computer. We, we need to use a finite uh, uh, damping parameter. And, and we can interpret this in, in two different ways, but, but are e equivalent. So e e either we, um, we interpret <laughs> like the poles to have a finite uh, imaginary part. This corresponds to, uh, to broaden the, the pole so we don't uh, have delta-like peaks anymore. They, they have a, a small broadening. Or we can uh, interpret as the imaginary part goes to the frequency in which we are evaluating the, the operators. Uh, so in this sense, we, we can think of uh, as a time order re real axis uh, due to the sign of the, of the imaginary part that, like I'm showing here. So in this sense, we can say that the pulse lies actually in, on the real axis. And this is why we have the name of uh, full frequency on the real axis. Uh, but uh, in the end, we need to use a finite damping in order to represent each, this object. Uh, so as, um, if we use a very small number uh, damping, we, we need to use more frequency to represent these uh, delta light peaks. It's a, a parameter also in the code. Then, the, also in this work, uh, it can be shown that, uh, so if we go to uh, the frequency plane, the complex plane in general, we close a contour, semicircular contour on, on the upper uh, semi-plane, we will engulfe the, the, same, the same pole as if I uh, use a contour like this, the semicircular in the, in the left uh, side of the plot. So with this, we can transform an integral on the real axis in an integral along the binary axis. And this is uh, one of the first idea of the contour deformation technique. So um, in, in, in the general situation, we have a convolution. Then the general situation, the, the frequency in which we want to compute the self-energy is not zero. Then there is a shift of the poles of G with respect to W. So as you can see here in this plot, it's very complex, but uh, this is a semiconductor because I have a gap, but in general, so this uh, bl black uh, points are the poles of W, while the crosses are the pole of G, evaluating omega minus omega prime. So in the case of this omega is zero, there are a line with respect to the imaginary axis. But in general, they, they, they are not. Then there are two different formulas to, to integrate uh, the self-energy using this kind of techniques. One is called imaginary path axis integration that is using the uh, Keldy formalis in order to define this kind of contour. So it's the same idea. An integral on the binary axis can be transformed into an integral. Uh, so, sorry, an integral on the real axis can be transformed in an integral along the binary axis. I am in, um, in the dashed line represent the closure of the contour in order to englobe the same poles as I rotate the the contour to to get the the integration along the real axis. Then there also uh, we can also use the, the residue theorem and to uh, perform a, a contour like a Lenny scale that is represented here. But in the end, we, these two approaches are equivalent. Just You will find different names in the literature. But 
in the end we are um, including the same the same uh, poles uh, in, within the contour. So the final expression, if you, the, if you use the residue theorem, is like is that the integration on the real axis is equal to the integration along the binary axis with, uh, plus the sum of residues uh, entering in the contour. So uh, in order to, so it may seem that we, we did nothing, but as I showed you before, the dependence, the frequency dependence along the binary axis is m m much more simpler than on the real axis. Then, in order to solve the integral along the binary axis, we can use, for instance, numerical evaluation using similar quadrature rules. Uh, um, but then the, the mesh will be, uh, so the number of frequency that we need to use in order to convert this integral would be much less than if we do it on the real axis. Uh, so we could use also uh, interpolation, mo uh, fit models, uh, or the analytic continuation technique that I will explain in a second. So since this dependence is very simple, we can use a simple form to interpolate this, and, uh, and then we can we can use we can do two different things. Either we use this equation here, compute the, the integral analytically with, with one of these two analytical forms, or we use directly the analytic continuation of the self-energy, that is, uh, we, go the, we compute the self-energy, the complex uh, plane in general with these two uh, analytical forms, and then, like in the plasma pole, since we have analytical form, we can evaluate it on the real axis without the need of compute the residues. This is uh, the origin of the two different names. Either we use the contour deformation, we, we have the summation of the residues, this is more robust, uh, or we, we use an analytical model for the self-energy uh, in order to just evaluate the self-energy on the real axis with this uh, model. Then I will uh, explain uh, our approach that we call multiple approximation. I, I, you can see, as, uh, see it as an extension of the multiple model. Here we model the polarizability with uh, a finite number of poles. So the, again, this is uh, uh, inspired by the, by the Lehman representation, but here the difference is that we don't want to use a very large number of poles. So these poles, in general, are like to be complex in, in general. Then the idea is that we are uh, passing from a single particle picture where we have a lot of transition, like in the kind of depolarizability at the independent particle level, to uh, another picture in which we want to reduce the, the number of poles. So what we want to describe are uh, collective excitation of the, of the system. Then th there is the way to use, uh, reduce the number of poles by allowing the poles to have a, a finite imaginary part. The way of in, uh, um, obtaining the parameter is by an interpolation procedure in this case, we need to use a number of frequencies that is twice the number of poles. And this leads to a, a nonlinear system of equation that we can solve with two different approaches. One is a mapping into an, an equivalent linear system, and the other is based on the Padetilis iterative procedure to solve Pade approximation, because this multiple uh, model can be written as a particular Pade approximation. Then, the key, the key point of the, uh, our approach is to, the, to, to choose how to choose the frequency we want to use in the interpolation. We have to do several combinations, and we, we have uh, proposed this uh, recipe that we call double parallel sampling. Here in this plot, I am uh, showing insulate corresponding to a toy polarizability that has 200 poles on the real axis. And the idea of this sampling that has two branches one closest to the real axis and another one further away, is that the, the, line, the blue line introduces a simplification because we are far from the real axis. What we see there is more, is more smooth than what we get on the real axis. But then we, we also uh, add points close to the region we actually want to compute the self-energy 
and somehow this combination is optimal. So the details can be found in, in, in our paper, uh, but with around 10 ports, let's say, is enough to get a very accurate description, as I will show later. We also use a failure condition in order to avoid the physical position of the pole. This is already present in the plasma pole model. In the Godwin uh, implementation, if this condition is satisfied, we usually fix the pole to a, a constant value of one heart tree. We have generalized and improved this condition in the multiple case. Then we have, uh, uh, we, we propose two uh, quantities to monitor the interpolation. One is the number of failures in, in the, the whole matrix and the relative standard deviation of the, the model with respect to the sampling points. We can see here uh, these two quantities, the average in the matrix as a function of the number of polos so compared with the plasma pole uh, case. Uh, for these three materials, as you can see, there may be a very large number of failures already in the plasma pole that is close to 40% in the case of the IO2. Uh, the multipole with one pole, even if we are fixing the same number of poles, the error is uh, lower because we have changing the condition. Uh, uh, but in general, both quantity go, uh, goes to zero as we increase the number of poles. Then this is how looks the polarizability one uh, random matrix element, the case of HBN computed with different number of poles and compared to the full frequency case. And we can see that eight poles is uh, already very good. So uh, here I show different uh, matrix element of uh, HBN. The, so we are using the same number of poles for all of them. We can describe real and imaginary part of the polarizability at the same time and work for diagonal and non-diagonal matrix element in general. This is the case of silicon that is most simple, so the first element that is the most important one uh, is, looks like be, uh, a single pole. Then there is also TiO2 that is more complex, but the multiple with a small number of poles managed to get the overall uh, description. Uh, so some elements are more complex, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, for larger G, this element is uh, less important, so you can see uh, on top the, the scale, so compared to the first element. Uh, so in the end, we, we get a very good description. So uh, then uh, we, wa we can compare the result of the quasi-particle uh, with the, the, these three different approaches, plasma pole, full frequency, and multipole. I am using the li linearized quasi-particle equation, as I show here. And this is the comparison. This is the, the difference between the fu full frequency gap, compute, uh, the gap computed with full frequency and the multiple case, and also compared to the plasma pole for the three materials. We can see with around 10 poles, we get very accurate result with compar comparing to full frequency results. Uh, then, the multipole model also provides an analytical form for the self-energy. So simply, this is the integral. This is an extension of the plasma pole case. Uh, so we have the green function. We have a multipole analytical model for W. And then we, we can integrate the self-energy and we get this expression that we can test against uh, full frequency. This is the comparison for uh, the silicon case. So here we have two quasi-particles corresponding to the the, the gap of silicon, uh, computed with three different approaches, plasma pole in blue and, and gray, um, full frequency in red um, and orange, and the multipole with eight poles uh, in black uh, and gray. So we can see that the multipole provides a very good description of the whole uh, energy range relevant for both the self-energy and the spectrum function. Uh, so as a summary, uh, so uh, I show you there, there are several methodologies addressing the full frequency dependency in the EW approximation. Uh, we, we need to be careful to decide which uh, is better for the system we are studying. Uh, there are three main approaches in, in the Jambo code. One is the plasma pole that uses two frequencies. So we have one pole. We need two frequencies. This, the number of frequencies is proportional to the computational cost. In the real axis approach, we need at least 100 frequencies. Depending on the material for TIO2, for instance, I have used 
1,500 frequencies. And this can be compared to uh, a simple multiple model where we use 10, around 10 ports that correspond to 20 frequencies. Uh, so in the end, the multiple, I have shown that the multiple with an optimal sampling provides a, a very accurate uh, description compared to full frequency uh, method and, and much uh, lower cost. So this is the uh, bibliography I have used for the present presentation. Uh, so the first book is just uh, for, for introduction, DFT. Uh, I like it, I use it for my, my thesis. Uh, this is the, uh, the same books that have been shown before. And these two are the Jumbo papers. And if you want to uh, take a, a follow-up of the, my presentation, you can, you can go to the paper I already posted several times or to my PhD thesis. With that, I thank you very much for your attention. So the session is open for questions, if you have any. Yes. Yeah, it's just a curiosity. Uh, you said that um, in, in order to um, improve uh, the plasma pole approximation, the first simple thing uh, you can do is uh, to start uh, to considering the reciprocal lattice uh, structure of uh, the plasmas. So you start putting uh, plasmas with uh, Q, G, V, and G prime. Uh, yes. Yes. I was wondering, what's the, um, what's the meaning of uh, plasmon poles with the G different with G prime? So the, the energy of the plasmon dispersed with, with, the, with Q. Uh, yeah, OK, yeah. No, but uh, with the, the, if there are the reciprocal lattice vectors different, G different from G prime. So, so yes, you, you have a, a model. So you, you see this uh, picture. Uh, let me take silicon. So you have a whole matrix, no? Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, in the multipolar, I understand, but uh, OK. So okay. what the, the, the structure of the polarizability is like the, 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 yeah, the yeah. head of the polarizability looks like a, a single peak for many materials. Then this, uh, um, the, the amplitude diminishes, but then we have more structure correspond to, because we have all the possible transition, no? And, and we have less overlapping in this matrix element. But the, the amplitude is diminishing. So the idea of the generalized plasmon pole is to approximate all the matrix element. So not only G, G prime, this, this is for Q equals zero. For, uh, sorry, for different Qs, we use this, the same model. So we have two parameters for each matrix element, G, G prime, Q. And uh, it's less accurate for, for, uh, for, for uh, other matrix element, non-diagonal, et cetera. But, also, the amplitudes diminish. Look, the idea is to use the, the same uh, model for all the matrix elements. Just uh, I try to reformulate. I think his question is, uh, if I got it right, why do we have uh, a pole which depends on G? So I think he is no, no. on, on G and G prime. Yeah. So it be, because it, the of the class, so you're asking, oh. why do we have omega G G prime Q? This is your question? Yeah, but only for the plasma. Oh, yeah, only for the plasma. Yeah, yeah, the, the plasma pole. But, uh, so maybe, Davio, you can comment on that. OK. So yes, be, because uh, if you think so you need to take into account non-homogeneous materials. I, I think the pole is not dependent on G and G prime. No, or? no, no. The, the, po the poles, no. Sorry, uh, this is the, the expression of the, the polarizability, the full expression. So you, you can see here that the poles do not depend on, on G, G prime. It's the same pole, it's just the residuals which are changing and then you see yes. the, 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 in the frequency plot that... Uh, the residues are, are here in the numerator depend on G, G prime. But then the idea of the generalized plasma pole is to allow since we will use one single pole, let's, let's allow it to be different for all the matrix elements. Uh, so, so you use a, a model, but 
uh, is somehow flexible, no? And the multiple approach use the same idea. So we have 10 ports that are different for each matrix element. Okay, so another question from here. Sorry. Sorry, I, I go very basic. I think you went well, like uh, a lot in the specifics, but um, maybe you you can argue of like uh, the reason behind why you have this structure on the on the screen interaction. So like, uh, so at the re which is the, I guess is the, the region of the plasma pole approximation. So why do you have these divergences? So can you can you give a like a physical intuition behind it? And is it valid only like in molecules, or it's only valid on solids or? Okay, okay. So the so in, in general, so this uh, chi naught is uh, at the level of, of uh, non-interacting uh, particles. So as uh, Andrea Marini was explaining, uh, in the end, if you consider the screening, we have collective excitation. The main the main uh, contribution to this uh, uh, screening potential are plasma. So uh, are collective excitation. Uh, so, uh, of the of the material, no, the response, how the material responds to a, 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 a perturbation that is a remo removing or uh, adding an electron. Uh, this is a collective excitation. You, you don't have a, a single particle picture anymore. So, uh, and mathematically, this is reflected in the Dyson equation. So, the in, this is a nonlinear equation. You start with this kind of representation for each uh, matrix element. So here you have several matrix elements. You have a, a, a probability that have delta light peaks in all the possible transition, single particle transition. But then when the, this object enters in the Dyson equation, you have a um, um, superposition of this, all these poles that uh, changing, let's say, the, the residues. So in some half, you have an envelope of all the um, transitions, and you get an overall uh, um, behavior that looks like uh, one peak, very big peak that corresponds to a plasma. So if I can comment on that. So I mean, what you're asking is, why do we have uh, different structures in between the macroscopic, the head of the response function and the microscopic terms? I think that in general, the common knowledge is we know that the macroscopic screening has this big plasmon pole, and this is what is used as, a, as a, an input for the, the plasmon pole. But uh, we don't know what happens to the microscopic screening. And what he has shown is that uh, at the microscopic level, the response can be different. So you can have the pores which are shifted and even multiples. I, I would say that uh, so the microscopic screening is a bit different from the macroscopic one. And then if you think to a molecule, for example, a big molecule, the macroscopic ah. screening is, uh, tends to go to zero because you are in vacuum. But there is a microscopic screening, which is important. Um, yeah. OK, Okay. yes, I forgot to answer that part of the question. So you, you can use the plasma pore uh, model for, for any kind of materials. Uh, but it's, uh, let's say it's better for, uh, uh, doesn't depend of the, on the di dimensionality. Uh, so there are some cases like uh, uh, Marine <coughs> half stood with the strong uh, in, uh, screen interaction, this uh, means very complex frequency structure that you cannot approximate with uh, with one single pole. So the deviation would be uh, larger in this kind. Uh, the example are uh, metals with uh, low uh, plasma uh, energies. So we have this main structure very close to the, to the uh, origin of coordinates. This will result in, in poles. Uh, so uh, let me try to explain. This, this object entering the self-energy, and you will get uh, the, the poles will, uh, will be entered here. So you have, a, a, in the probability, a pole close to the um, origin of coordinates. This will result in a pole close to the Fermi energy. And then the speech I, I made before that the plasma pole is good if you are in the tail of the probability. So in the, in the tail of the self-energy, uh, it's, it's not valid anymore because we have a structure close to the Fermi level. So whenever you find a material that have structure 
in the probability close to the original coordinates, uh, it could be a candidate for not using the plasma pool. Okay, I think it's time to move to the next speaker. We thank Dario again.